On February 20th, the Second Army of NATO and its proxy forces once again failed to capture the village of Nairab in eastern Idlib from the Syrian army. The Turkish attack involved two dozen pieces of military equipment including battle tanks, artillery, over 200 Turkish soldiers, approximately 300 members of Haret Turel Sham, formerly the Syrian branch of Al-Qaeda, and other Turkish-backed groups. The Turkish attack started at approximately 1 p.m. local time under the jeers of mainstream media regarding the nearing collapse of the Syrian defenses and the Assad government under powerful strikes from the Turkish army. By 2 p.m. local time, some Turkish supporters on Twitter had already concurred on the fate of Aleppo city and were preparing to advance on Damascus. However, by 5 o'clock it appeared that the attack died out despite the massive rocket and artillery strikes and the participation of Turkish groups united in their efforts against the Syrians with Al-Qaeda. Turkish-led forces, supposedly Turkish troops, even launched a manpad at a Russian Su-24 warplane that came to provide close air support to Syrian troops. After this, the Turkish Defense Ministry reported that two Turkish soldiers were killed and five others were injured in an airstrike. In keeping with the best traditions, the Turkish Defense Ministry released a victorious statement claiming that 50 Assad troops were killed and that two Syrian battle tanks, two armored vehicles, two armed pickups, and a howitzer had been destroyed. However, all that the Turkish side was able to provide to confirm these claims were a few Hayrat Tirol Sham selfies from the vicinity of Nairab. Turkish state media immediately declared that Turkish forces did not want to capture the village and had just sent a message to the oppressive Assad regime. After this, the mighty Turkish army requested Patriot missile systems from the United States in order to deter the Assad aggression in Idlib. There are two explanations for this. Ankara apparently missed the news that Patriots deployed in Saudi Arabia had repeatedly failed to protect its military infrastructure from missile and drone strikes by the Yemeni Houthis. The Erdogan government would like to see troops of the United States in Idlib alongside their Turkish and Al-Qaeda counterparts. The Russian side officially confirmed that its warplanes were striking targets in Idlib in support of the Syrian army. According to it, a battle tank, six armored vehicles, and five armed pickups were destroyed. Moscow says that Turkish artillery strikes injured four Syrian soldiers. February is coming to its end, and the Turkish ultimatum demanding that the Syrians withdraw from the liberated areas is expiring. The inability of Turkish forces to recapture even a single village from the Syrian army already became a powerful blow to the public image of the Erdogan government. Therefore, it's likely that the Turkish army will continue their attacks in Idlib, paying with its own blood for the neo-Ottoman dreams of Erdogan and his inner circle.